Okay, year 13, the last act of this half term is to mark your test, so let's go through it then. Uh, they're trying to find out the mass of iron in a steel wire. So, already I'm thinking transition metal test, iron, it's going to be a titration, an iron 2 plus manganate titration. So, 680 milligrams, that's 0.68 grams of the wire with an excess of sulfuric acid, that's to provide H plus. So that all of the iron in the wire forms Fe2 plus. Okay. Um, then they oh a hundred centimeter cube volumetric flask. Then they take twenty five. So they got some wire, which we know has got iron in it, and it's zero point six eight grams of that wire, but not pure. They're then going to dissolve in some acid and make up to a hundred, and then they're going to take twenty five of that and do a titration. And the ice always say, "Take me to the burette." So the burette said 0 0.02 moles per decimeter cubed. That's all the information I've got so far. An equation between iron and sulfuric acid. All right. So you've got iron and sulfuric acid. Note that you're not given the formulas for these. You've just got to know sulfuric acid is H2SO4. You're going to make iron sulfate. Metal plus acid makes salt plus hydrogen. I'm going for FeSO4 because it tells me that you're going to have iron 2 plus. Um, so FeSO4, the iron will be 2 plus, the sulfate is 2 minus. All right, so it's that willingness to just have a go. Iron plus sulfuric acid makes iron sulfate plus hydrogen. Uh, okay, titration results. Calculate the mean titer. Well, first thing to say is that you're not allowed to use the first titer um, in uh, working out the mean. So, hang on a sec, I've just got to, um, I'm going to have the mark scheme up just by me, just in case. So normally I'll just do these without the mark scheme entirely, but since you haven't marked these yourself already, just gonna make sure I don't go down some crazy path. All right. Uh, that's not concordant anyway, but you're never allowed to use that column. Uh, 22.7 plus 22.6 divided by two equals 22.65 centimeters cubed, easy peasy. Give the overall ionic equation for the oxidation of Fe2 plus by manganate ions. Um, I know it. Because I've written it so often. However, you might have gone MnO4 minus goes to Mn2 plus, Fe2 plus goes to Fe3 plus, plus an electron, plus 4H2O, 8H plus, 5E minus. The point is, right, this is on the specification, you need to know this titration, and that's showing you, you need to know it. All right, because it just says, write the equation. It doesn't tell you where any of these turn into. You need to know that, for that equation. All right. State the color change. Well, the colour change is going to be, so the colour change, for me, exam technique says you've got to say both, not just the last colour. So it's going to go colourless, that solution will be colourless, and it will go uh, colourless, can't spell today, colourless, and you'll get this very pale pink. All right, you're not allowed to say to purple. It doesn't go to purple. If you go to purple, you've well overshot it. All right, pale, pale pink. It, it says on the mark scheme you're allowed pale purple. It's pale pink. Name the piece of apparatus used to take the 25 cent. All right, volumetric pipette. Adding the potassium and burette. Okay, B-U-R-E-T-T-E. Why is my writing so bad today? The balance used to weigh 680 milligrams of iron wire has an uncertainty of 0.005 grams. 
A container was weighed and its mass was subtracted from the total mass of the container and the wire. So what they've done there, they've taken the mass of the the container was weighed and its mass was... So there's two masses there. They've weighed something twice. A container was weighed and the total mass of the container of wire was weighed. So there are two weighings used to determine this. Well, this is 0 0.680 grams. And because there were two weighings, it's two lots of the uncertainty. 0 0.005 plus 0 0.005, so 0 0.01. Calculator. And percentage uncertainty. So uncertainty is the is the uncertainty, the absolute uncertainty divided by what you've measured. 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.680 equals 1.47%. 1.47%. Right, you know, remember that so this is a recent paper, this is 2019. You're gonna, there's gonna be, you're gonna feel uncomfortable in the exam with these, even though you know they're not that hard, these questions, you're not gonna get 100%, but you've just gotta keep going, keep going, keep going, keep plod, plodding away, try and keep clear thoughts. Right then, this is June 20, June 2020, this one, which I think was actually, the exam was done in November 2020, so this is, because June 2020 was cancelled, so this is, Question three off there, so I'm just going to get it up on my mark scheme on the computer so I can refer to it when needed. So the way I'm doing this, I'm doing the question, then I'm looking at the um, mark scheme. June's where? I'm on the wrong one. Sorry, where are you? Have I got this mark scheme? That's a very nice tune. Question three. Yarp. Explain why complexes formed from transition metals are coloured. All right, so I would say when ligands bond to central metal ions, this causes d orbital splitting, which creates an energy gap delta E equals HV, which corresponds to the frequency of visible light. When white light is shone upon the complex, d electrons are excited, d electrons absorb frequency V and are excited. The complementary colour is transmitted. <laughs> the marks are for, in this case, uh, the electrons becoming excited. Anywhere in your answer gets you one mark. The electrons absorb frequencies. So a mention of absorbing specific frequencies or of visible light. If you just say absorbing frequencies and you haven't mentioned visible light, so our, our catch-all thing, somewhere in there you need the idea of visible light and absorbing frequency for a second mark. And then the final mark is for complementary colour um, being transmitted. Okay. Yeah, let's just have a little look. Yeah, that's it. Okay, they don't have to be, so any mention of D-electrons being excited, it doesn't have to have the sentence D-electrons are excited. You could say D-electrons absorb it and are excited. So these can all be, so the idea of absorbing frequency of visible light, the idea of D-electrons being excited and an idea of a complementary color being transmitted is enough for the three marks. That's why our model answer is so good because it always gets the marks. The iron content of iron tablets can be determined by colorimetry. So you can dissolve a tablet in sulfuric acid, oxidize all the iron to form Fe3+, that gives you a nice dark color. Convert the Fe3 plus into a complex that absorbs light of wavelength 490 nanometers. Then make the solution up to 250, okay? Then measure the absorbance with a colorimeter and use a calibration graph, okay, right. Calculate the energy in joules gained by each electron in the absorption of 400 nanometers. Now, nanometers is a wavelength. So what you've got to know here is you've got to know 
that delta E, well we learned delta E equals HV and also delta E equals HC over wavelength. So this is how your revision comes in. That you think you see H and C and wavelength and you go, I've learned that. Or you go into the exam and you go, I didn't learn that. And you're stuffed. You haven't got a chance, have you? So you've got to learn your stuff. So they're asking for the energy. I've got H, which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. I'm going to times that by C, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. And I'm going to divide that by the wavelength which is 490 nanometers. Now again, oh, it's tricky this. It's gotta be in meters, this wavelength. All right, the reason I know that for sure is because the speed of light's got meters in it, it's not got nanometers in it. So everything's gotta be compatible. So it's gonna be 490. Now I remember nanometers is nanometers. So times 10 to the minus nine. All right, one mark is for writing this statement. One mark is for realizing that that's 10 to the minus nine. And the final mark is for plugging it all together. All right. The answer overall is 4.06 times 10 to the minus 19. All right. It appears that If you don't write that, you don't get the first mark. So there you go, people taking shortcuts. You have to have written the statement, the equation. Describe how a calibration graph is produced with colorimetry. All right, so calibration graph, remember, is where you've got concentration versus absorbance, and you, you, you know, that was an awful line of best fit. I'm gonna put some over the top to make it look better. Um, so you need to make up a, Make a range of solutions with a known concentration. So that's these. I'll make up like lots of different solutions with known concentrations like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0.6. Um, and measure their absorbance. I think I'd be tempted to use a complementary color filter and stuff like this. Then plot a graph of concentration versus absorbance. How it is used to find the concentration of the iron three complex. Uh, then you're gonna read the value of absorbance for the unknown and use graph to determine conch. So you're gonna go, oh, here's my unknown was here. So you read across and down and that tells you its concentration. The concentration of iron three is 4.66 times 10 to the minus three moles per decimeter cubed. Calculate the mass in milligrams of iron in the tablet used to make the 250. All right. Whew. Okay, you've got 4.6, these are the only numbers you've got. Um, I'm just looking back at the other one, make the solution up to two. Yeah, that's the only numbers you've got. You've got 4.66 moles per decimeter. So you've got 4.66 times 10 to the minus three moles per decimeter cubed. And you've got 250 centimeters cubed, which is a volume. So there's a concentration and there's a volume. The volume is 250 centimeters cubed. If only we had an equation that linked moles per decimeter cubed and volume. Oh yes, we have. Moles equals C times V divided by a thousand. So I'm gonna do 4.66 times 10 to the minus three times 250 divided by a thousand. I'm not doing anything weird. I know moles equals CV over a thousand. I've got a C and a V, I've got a C and a V. All right, so I'm going to go 4.66 times 10 to the minus 3 times 250 equals, divided by 1,000 equals 1.165 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of iron 3. I'm in an exam now. I'm making it clear what I've done. 
moles of iron 3. So to work out the mass, you times by the MR. Well, in this case, it's the AR of iron. You could write yeah, MR. Uh, periodic table. Periodic table. 55.8. All right, you might think, oh, but is it 55.8 if it's iron 3 plus? Yes, because electrons don't weigh anything. So it's the it's the AR of iron. All right, so I'm going to times 55.8. 0 0.065. 0 0.065 grams. Milligrams. Um, so there's a thousand milligrams in a gram, so I need to times this by a thousand. If this is one gram, it'd be a thousand. So you'd have to, I'm just reminding myself to times by a thousand. Do 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 do, 65.007, I like that, 007. James Bond, innit? Sig figs. Doesn't say anywhere about sig figs. That seems a bit silly. 65 milligrams. Three six figs, three six figs, 65.0 milligrams. All right. Quite an easy question, maybe. Just, just seeing if you're given a C and a V, work out moles. Seems to make sense. One mark for moles, one mark for mass. V, H2O4 times Cl2. Very good, I like that. A nice looking complex. Plus, exists as two isomers. One isomer is shown. Draw the structure of the other isomer. So in this, the chloride ligands are next to each other. So you could have them opposite each other. So I'm going to do V. You know what? I'll stick with their drawer and I'll do the wedges and the dots. Not done a great job there. I'm going to put the chlorides opposite each other. OH2, OH2, oh 2 h 2 o still needs a plus, still needs that. Yeah, or you could have had them opposite in this way or opposite in this way. Any of those are fine. Type of isomerism then. So in the case of transition metals, we are dealing not with... Um, Structural isomerism, so this is cis trans isomerism, which is geometric. So, geometric, let's have a look at June 2018. Make sure that I've got that. June 2018, paper one. June 2018, paper one, mark scheme. That's question nine, geometric. I suppose you could call it cis-trans as well, couldn't you? So I'm just interested if you can say geometric or you have to be specific about cis-trans. Um, what would I go for? Mm. I'm not sure. I think I'd, I'd have written... I've committed to geometric now, haven't I? So but it's cis-trans. Cis-trans is the answer they want, but it says allow geometric. Okay, so I would have got that right. So this is cis-trans is like the best answer. But that is geometric. Heating ammonium vanadate produces vanadium 5 oxide. Vanadium 5 oxide. Water and one other product. Heating it. Okay, so that's just that then. It's just not reacting it with anything. Produces vanadium 5 oxide. Water. I'll do water and one other product. Vanadium 5 oxide we've come across before, V2O5, we've come across that before, uh, so that's why it's not weird, you're expected to know that, actually that's developed in the next question, so V2O5, water, I'm guessing it's ammonia, it looks ammonia-y to me, two vanadiums, Two vanadiums. It's going to be ammonia. It's got to be. Got to be. Does that balance? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That balances. Hey! Do you know what? With anything like this, I mentioned this before, if you struggle with it, writing an equation, 
Just out of the blue. Stick a star next to it. It's worth one mark. You've got to move on rather than spend ages panicking about this. Uh, multiples of this will work. You can have a half here, a half here, a half here, and a one here. You could have four, two, two, four. Vanadium 5 oxide. Give two equations to show how the catalyst is used and regenerated. I hope you just knew this. V2O5 plus SO2. Uh, V2O4 plus SO3. SO3 plus... Oh, come on, Norton. V2O4 plus half an O2 makes a V2O5. Yay! Only worth one mark. Because it's easy. Yeah? You're not, you're not allowed, like... Big celebrations and 20 marks for that, because it's easy. I bet some of you found this difficult. Heterogeneous catalysis. An alternative reaction route with a lower activation. Describe the stages. <laughs> really easy. All right. Adsorb. Bonds break. New bonds form. Desorb. Stick that into a sentence and you're done. All right, so this is June 18, 3.5. So what would I say here? I would go um, ammonia and oxygen. The reactants are adsorbed, adsorbed on the surface of the catalyst where bonds are weakened and they break, then new bonds form. The products are then desorbed. That will get you all the marks. Let me just double check that. Otherwise, I'm just... There's, it's uh, is that simple. That's all you needed to say. Let's go and find that. Right, mark one, adsorb. You can mention active sites if you want, but it's not vital. Adsorbed on active sites. Bonds are broken and new bonds formed. Desorption. That's all you ever... Imagine this question. Um... Vanadium acts as a heterogeneous catalyst for the reaction between methane and nitrogen. Describe the reaction pathway. Same answer. Manganese acts as a heterogeneous, heterogeneous catalyst between glucose and hexadiamine, blah, 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 blah. What's that? It's this. It doesn't matter what they say for heterogeneous. You're right, adsorb, bonds broken, bonds form, desorb. Did you see the change in oxidation state of nitrogen when NH3 is oxidized to NO? Uh, minus 3, plus 2. That's easy, isn't it? When ammonia reacts with oxygen, nitrous oxide can be produced instead of NO. Give an equation for this reaction. Another an equation one. NH3 reacts with O2. Nitrous oxide N2O can be produced. Right, my nitrogens and my oxygens are going there. So the only sort of logical thing that we're going to have that's going to go on here is you guys are going to make some water. Got to be, because it's got hydrogens. Two of them, two of them. Two nitrogens, two nitrogens. Six hydrogens now. Three H2Os. Four, two O2s. Tricky them, aren't they? Sometimes. Some people find them really hard because you're not willing to just sort of guess that it's probably going to... What else is formed? Stick a star next to it, come back at the end. <sighs> hey, Chris. Iron ions. And we're dealing with 3+. plus. So Fe3+. plus. Yeah, what's Fe3+, plus all about? It's all about hydroxides, brown precipitate, no excess, brown precipitate with ammonia, doesn't react with excess ammonia, brown precipitate with carbonates, it's all brown precipitates. They're changing it into some iron 2 plus down here as well, which is interesting. Okay, give the formula of precipitate J and state its colour. Iron 3 plus reacting with carbonate, so I'm over here. Brown precipitate, formula of J, Fe, OH3, H2O3. The equation, they always ask this one because it's the trickiest equation on the whole of our table. Fe, H2O6 times 3 plus, plus carbonate, 
makes FeOH3 H2O3 plus carbon dioxide plus water three of these, two of these, two of these, three of these, three of these. Look, I've practiced this so much. I, no, I'm going to get the mark scheme now. June 19, paper one. I've got a lot of windows open on my uh, computer here. June 19, paper one. And it's question four. All right. It's nearly half term, guys. I'm excited. Let's have some lovely time with your family here. Work and throw on the back burner for a, for a while, you know. One. 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 Any mistakes, obviously, uh, no marks. Formula of L. All right, so it looks like they've taken this and they reacted it with conch HCl. Cl minus ligands. You can fit four Cl minus ligands around the transition metal. It's going to be there. Notice they don't ask you the colour because it's not on our table. You don't need to know the colour. And an equation Fe H2O six times three plus plus four Cl minuses makes Fe Cl four minus plus six H2O. Uh, done. Just checking I've got that right. Excess is it? You can have HCl in here, but you'd have to have add some six, some H3O pluses on the on the other side. Suggest the react reagent for reaction three. Well, reaction three is turning three plus into two plus, uh, which is reducing the three plus to the two plus. What would be a good reducing agent? Um, a good reducing agent to go for. So a good oxidizing agent you probably know is oxygen, um, potassium manganate, acidified dichromate. A good reducing agent, um, you could think of a metal, any reactive metal. So typically we use, you could think of, uh, we often use zinc, zinc in acid. Uh, I don't know if you could have, any reactive metal? I mean, potassium would do it. Zinc in acid, though, is typically used because it's um, safe. Okay. Zinc in acid. That's just one of those things. It's like, how you, oh no, you know, when it comes to the, near the end of the term, I'll give you like a list of things. What do you say if you're asked to give a reducing agent? Zinc and acid is pretty good. Sodium NaBH4, you might have come across in organic chemistry. That would work. Pretty sure. Give the formula of precipitate M. Mm. So Fe2 plus being reacted with ammonia. All right, doesn't matter that it's concentrated. You're still going to make uh, Fe OH2, H2O4, and it's going to be green. Yeah. I'll write it here. Iron hydroxide, H2O four times. Green. Transition metal complexes have different shapes and many show isomerism. Describe the different shapes of complexes and show how they lead to different types of isomeriz isomerization. Use examples of complexes of cobalt, two, and platinum. Right, okay. Um, Describe the different shapes. I'm going to do some cobalts. <sighs> Bit of a faff, isn't it? Do all the structures of the examples show chosen. Octahedral, 90 degree angles. Doesn't ask me about that, but I'm going to say it anyway. Octahedral, uh, cobalt 2. So I'll just write 2 plus there. All right. Uh, what else could you have? Square planar, tetrahedral. Can I write a? Could I write a? 
square plane or a four. So, see, I don't know whether, but I'll try a, a cobalt with four chlorides. Two minus. You could have this. You don't know if these are real. It's just showing how they could lead to different types. That's all. Describe the different shapes. Tetrahedral, 109.5 degrees. With large ligands. What else can you have? You can have square planar. I mean, I don't know if these are real. Um, Ice, the real molecules or complexes, sorry, but it's, it doesn't matter. You're just trying to illustrate the idea of different shapes. So I might do a square planar one. Um, I don't know. Anything that just sort of you think it works. That would be two plus. Square planar. Octahedral, tetrahedral, square planar. What other ones did we have? Uh, silver. That's Tollens, linear. Uh, silver, it's so shiny, they all go in a line. That's, that's all the shapes, I think. Yeah, that's all the shapes. Uh, how they lead to different types of isomerism and how they lead to different types of isomerism. <laughs> okay, so you, in the actual exam, you got another sheet of paper like this. I forgot to scan it in. So different types of isomerism. So with octahedral, you can have, maybe I could have done this all in one diagram a bit better. Trans isomerism. It's a, it's a faff, this question, but you've got to do it. And you can't just spend hours crying about it, say, thinking it's going to be just the worst. You, you know all this stuff, so just try and get as much as you can. The cis-trans isomerism. What was the other one we did? Optical isomerism. Um, with bidentate ligands. Remember doing these? Doing NH2 on all of them and then bridge. Perfectly brilliant time to bring out those skills that we practiced. Notice how I'm not spending ages, but it's still legible. Check my camera still recording. So I'd have to annotate this now. Um, you can get optical isomers. I would say things like these are non superimposable mirror images. You need three bidentate ligands. All right. You might have done it with this with the um, ethane dioate. I don't know. If you've got three bidentate ligands, you can get non-superimposable mirror images, so optical isomerism. You can get cis-trans isomerism. Um, should I draw it as well in... I think I might draw it as well in the square planar. You can get cis-trans isomerism in square planar. I definitely could have arranged this better, organised it better. Because it says, show how isomerism can occur in all of these shapes. So in... What would that be? Oh, they both be neutral. So I'd say cis-trans, cis-trans can occur in square planar and that. Right, anyway, marks. For one to two marks, you need to talk a little bit about shapes and a little bit about cis-trans isomerism. If you have mentioned in your answer octahedral, then some sort of four coordinate, and then some sort of linear, what 
Lenny Anderson, come up in the Mark scheme. Ah, what have I done here? Sorry, guys. Platinum. I read it as silver. So linear has no place in this question. Platinum. This should be platinum. That's what they were getting at. Platinum square planar. My bad. Um, so do NH3, NH3. And then on your square planar ones, platinum, platinum. The dangers of rushing. All right, so let's have a look again. So any sort of mention of a six coordinate diagram, octahedral, then tetrahedral or square planar or four coordinates. So it, your platinum, it's so platinum should have been in there. So a mark would be for doing the platinum complex. That would be one minus that one. Um, that would be neutral, that one, sorry. I'm in a bit of a mare now. So square planar and an octahedral. Then cis trans isomerism. I'm going to show you the marks. It's going to work. All right. So we're talking about it's doing a six coordinate diagram and a four coordinate diagram is stage one. Talking about EZ isomerism or cis trans isomerism is for stage two, and then doing nice optical isomerism is stage three. If you cover all the three stages, you'll get six marks. If you're a bit ropey on one or two of the stages. Well, you'll lose marks. I'm not that bothered about the overall marks. What I'm bothered about is you've learned from me making my mistakes. I'm not reading the question. Reading platinum is silver. Weird. Um, I, I carried assumptions into this question and I got it wrong. Or I went down a bit of the a bit off tangent. I've done too much, basically. And I didn't mention platinum. So I've done plenty of examples with cobalt. I'm happy I did optical well. I'm happy that I did cis trans well with cobalt. But I messed up me square planar stuff. Um, I'd be a four maybe on that. Not because I didn't know the stuff, just because I didn't read the question. Anyway, so what do you, what's the learning that you need to have from this? You've got to be able to draw platinum. You've got to know platinum, it's platinum. So make sure you've got a square planar complex for platinum ready to go. All right. And therefore, you know that it can do cis trans. That was not good exam technique from me. Right, some reactors of aluminium 3 plus are shown below. Nearly there, guys. Uh, give the formula of the white precipitate B. Aluminium plus carbonate, white precipitate. All right, you should be good at these now. Aluminium, OH3, H2O3. Observation when it's added to us. Uh, one other observation. It's, it's a white precipitate. Fizzing, effervescence, bubbles. Um, equation. Let's see if I can do it just from scratch now. 2ALOH. No, I can't answer the answer to that. 2ALH2O6 times 3 plus. Plus 3 carbonates makes 2. I am making a mess of this. Stay calm, stay calm, Norton. Slow down. There we go. There we go. Shh. Calm. Give the formula of the complex ion C. All right, what's this? Aluminium, sodium hydroxide is added, a white precipitate that reacts to form a colourless solution. So what they've done is they've ended up adding excess ammonia. All right, so there's a few that you can write for this. Al, the one that I go for every time because it's easiest. <laughs> or you could have Al, OH5, H2O, 2 minus. Or you can have Al, O H four H two O twice minus square brackets. Give an equation for this reaction. State the condition needed. All right, you need excess um, sodium hydroxide. I'm not just going to write O H minus because they're talking about sodium hydroxide and the equation.
all right. That's my version of it. June 20. Let's have a look. June 18. June 19. Just looking for the past paper. June 20. Paper 1. June 20. Paper 1. Mark scheme. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just checking it out on the mark scheme. Question 5. Question 5. Yeah, you can have any of them. You can have any of them. Um, bubbles of excess. You're allowed excess OH minus, it says. You're allowed to say that. You are allowed to balance these equations with sodiums in them. If you did write 6NaOH, you would need... Some six Na pluses over this side as well. I'd much rather you didn't though. Deduce the formula of the complex iron A. Right. Na4 EDTA. This is EDTA 4 minus. See what I did? I rubbed out the four sodiums. That's EDTA 4 minus. If you take aluminium with six waters and you add EDTA 4 minuses, you will make aluminium, aluminium, EDTA, EDTA is 4 minus, and so that's going to be 1 minus, um, that is from the knowledge that you know EDTA is a hexadentate ligand. It says on here, do not penalise the absence of square brackets, so you, you know, don't worry about your square brackets. I tend to put square brackets around ions and no square brackets around precipitates, although I'm looking at the mark scheme, they seem to put square brackets around everything. Explain with the use of an equation why a solution containing AlH2O3 six times has a pH of less than seven, in other words, it's acidic. All right, this is because the central metal ion pulls electron density towards itself, which weakens the OH bonds in the water ligands and releases H plus into solution. So the equation is Al, H2O6 times 3 plus. Um, Al, H2O5 times OH, 2 plus, plus H plus. All right, or you can have it with... H2O on this side and H3O plus on this side. Either of those is fine. Explanation. Um, aluminium 3 plus is very charge dense and pulls um, electron density towards itself, which weakens the OH bonds in water, releasing H plus ions. All right, let's have a look at the mark scheme. All right, one mention of charge density. Aluminium is very charge dense. All right, instead of saying charge density, you can just say small and highly charged. So charge density, any ideas around that for one mark charge density? And the second mark is for weakening the OH bond in water, which releases H+. So both of them weakens the bond, releasing H+. Weakens OH, releases H+, for the second mark. Big stretch. Right. Thanks everyone. And I mean that. Thank you for working so hard this half term. Um, I know it's going to have been challenging for a lot of you to stay motivated. And I really appreciate all your efforts. And I hope at the end of this, you know, that... Um, well, you got something valuable from this from this experience because it's really weird. Um, but yeah, you're a wonderful class. Um, you're working really hard. And thank you for everything. All right, have a lovely afternoon. See you later.